Hi guys, my name is Nikita Sashlev and today I have James Passen here, CEO and co-founder of BioVaxis. Now, James, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you have a very interesting background as an entrepreneur and a hedge fund manager for the last 20 years. How did you get into the world of science and pharmaceuticals? Hmm. Well, back uh, in, the, in my hedge fund days, uh, I was quite interested in biotechnology and cancer immunotherapy as an investment theme. So, you know, as part of a larger portfolio, uh, you know, I got deeply involved on the buy side as an investor in biotech in all stages of life sciences. And what led me to co-found BioVaxis was my knowledge of uh, the underlying technology developed by uh, my partner, Dr. David Bird, who invented uh, haptonized autologous therapeutic cancer vaccine technology 25 years ago when he was a professor at Thomas Jefferson University. Uh, there, there was uh, a previous version of this technology was actually successfully brought all the way to uh, the beginning of uh, two phase three trials for uh, melanoma and cancer. And uh, that along the way, uh, excellent data was generated, which is uh, supportive of our view that, uh, that the, the haptonization uh, can become the fundamental basis for a successful therapeutic cancer vaccine strategy. So James, are you guys in the COVID vaccine race? Well, we have a COVID vaccine candidate and uh, I'm pleased to report that we had outstanding results from an in vivo preclinical study uh, with mice. Uh, and uh, we just got the antibody data from the study and 96.4% uh, of the vaccinated mice developed uh, antibodies uh, against uh, the uh, S1 subunit of the spike protein, and there was no visible side effects. Do you think there could possibly be more than one vaccine that's effective? Absolutely. I mean, look, some of the leading vaccines are focused on antibody generation. Uh, there's a lot of literature and, and scientific paper suggesting that T-cell immunity is more important than antibodies. T-cell immunity can provide lasting protection. James, can you tell me more about your COVID diagnostic? Absolutely. So we've developed a novel uh, diagnostic for testing for T-cell immunity to, to SARS-CoV-2, uh, which is the disease that causes COVID. There's not much broad screening of T-cell immunity, but we know from the literature and the scientific evidence that T-cell immunity is extremely important to recovering from COVID. And in fact, most in, in a recent study, you know, the patients that uh, have recovered from COVID, you know, have T-cell immunity to COVID. And antibodies are known to start to fall off, you know, after, uh, you know, four or five months, some of the levels of antibodies decrease. So the T-cell immunity lasts I mean, it should last decades. It certainly does in the case of other diseases. But having this, this screening tool available on a large scale would allow for better distribution of the vaccine. But what about after COVID? W would this drug have any other uses? Well, the great thing with our approach is it's very simple. For example, is COVID mutates. We can easily manufacture a new vaccine with a different protein. Uh, and we view this as, uh, as, as much bigger than COVID. There, there are a lot of viruses that, uh, there's, that, that we are going to be able to address, we believe, through our approach of haptonizing viral proteins. How will the company BioVaxis do after COVID? Uh, look, again, we're not a COVID company. Uh, we're, we're a vaccine uh, developer. Uh, we, we are very uh, excited by the discussions we're having with potential pharmaceutical partners we're talking about collaborating on new virus, uh, viral antigen targets using our, our haptonized uh, approach. Uh, we also, uh, you know, are very excited to get into the clinic with our cancer vaccine program. Our lead indication on the cancer side is ovarian cancer. Uh, it's a huge problem and uh, it, it's, it's a huge potential market, frankly. And uh, we, we believe that our approach of uh, the haptonizing uh, an autologous haptonized uh, therapeutic cancer vaccine combined with checkpoint antibodies uh, will have, has a good chance of 
uh, of working in ovarian cancer because checkpoint antibodies by themselves are not particularly effective uh, for ovarian cancer. And then after ovarian, we're going to go on to other cancers. Really, any, any solid resectable tumor uh, we can address with our technology. There are so many pharmaceutical companies out there. So how do you guys differentiate from them? How, what makes you different? Firstly, we, are the, we believe we are the uh, world leader in haptonized vaccine research. Uh, we have the benefit of all the historic uh, data uh, generated by another company uh, that controlled a previous generation of this technology. We, we think that the, the merits of our technology will become clear as we, as we release more data, as we enter into new partnerships. For example, recently we announced a collaboration with Ohio State University, which has a BL3 uh, biological safety lab, uh, which, is, which is doing very significant research on COVID that is doing uh, you know, animal challenge studies and is, is run by some of the world leading researchers on, on SARS viruses. So we're, we're, we're very excited about the collaboration with the Ohio State University. We expect to have other collaborations and partnerships uh, in the pipeline, uh, which will serve to validate uh, our technology. Uh, so, so James, it sounds like this is not just a billion dollar company, but a, a multi-billion dollar company. Am I right? Well, obviously, uh, I would be I'm biased in terms of how I would uh, think about that question. But, um, you know, I can't make any prediction on the future valuation of my company. But when you look at the size of the markets that we're addressing with our proprietary technology, uh, if you look at the, um, the, all of the potential different disease indications uh, that we might approach, uh, you know, I, I think we do have the potential to be a global significant company in the future in our industry. So thank you so much, James. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. Uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak to me today. Great pleasure. Thank you.